Oh, hello there. Good to see that you're back and good to see that I'm back since it has been more than a month since my last upload. But we're back at it. We're gonna keep on schedule this time. Today we're gonna start by doing the most interesting and fun board game there is. And you know what I'm talking about. Monopoly. So I got the idea for this project after playing Monopoly and losing money in it quicker than I do trading options using advice from Wall Street bets. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna try to see if there is a mathematical or computer science approach that we can use to beat every single person in Monopoly. Before we go ahead and deep mind AI the shit out of this, let's first understand the basics of Monopoly and learn how to win. So in Monopoly you win when you by the end of the game have the most money and you have the most money when people pay rent when they land on your properties. So all we need to do is find out which of the properties are most visited by the players and simply invest on those properties. There are a couple of things that affect the position of a player in the board. The first one is rolling the dice which will make you move places. The other one is community chest which will take you to these places. The third one is chance which will take you to these places. The next one is the go to jail square in which if you land you'll be taken immediately to jail. The other one is rolling three doubles in a row which will also take you to jail. And the last one that affects the position is the choice of a player to stay in jail for up to three rounds. So all we need to do is combine all these ways that move us along the board and find the frequencies that each square is visited during the whole game. Now there are two ways that we can go about solving this problem. The first one is simulating a player going around the board 100,000 times and see the frequencies that we get for each square. But as you can see I've done this many simulations and I'm looking to bump up my view numbers all for that YouTube money that I'm getting. So what we're gonna do today is use a mathematical method called Markov chains to get the exact frequency that each square is visited during the board of the game. And don't think that I'm a master at Markov chains by any means, if you're here for that you're in the wrong channel. But I'm gonna quickly give you a TLDR as to what Markov chains are and how we're gonna use them to solve this exact problem. So Markov chains can be used to find the steady state probability of a system where transitioning from one state to the other only depends on the current state that you're in and on the time that has elapsed. So this simple example will explain to you all you need to know about Markov chains and we're gonna apply the same ideas in solving Monopoly. So here we have a graph that shows the behavior of a baby and the probabilities of moving from one state to the other. So let's look at the eat behavior. So if the baby has just eaten, there is a 10% that they'll eat again and there is a 30% chance that they'll cry after that and there is a 60% chance that they'll go to sleep. So if someone asked you that out of 1000 actions that a baby makes how many of those would be eating, how many would be crying and how many would be sleeping, how do you solve that? And the solution to that is pretty simple. You first build a transition matrix as shown in the right which will show the transitioning from one state to the other and the probabilities for each and all you need to do is multiply that matrix thousands and thousands of times with itself and then just look at the first column and that will be your steady state probability for eating, sleeping and crying. And this is basically what we have to do to solve Monopoly. If we had the transition matrix for Monopoly then all we needed to do is multiply it and our solution would be solved and we would have the steady state probabilities for all the squares. But we do not have that. And the way that I chose to go about building this transition matrix is by building smaller transition matrices for each method that moves us along the board. The first and base method that we're gonna start with is rolling the dice. And here we want to find the probability of going from one square to the rest of the squares just by rolling the dice. And when you're rolling two dice, you can get numbers 2 to 12 with these probabilities. So if you start in the first square, you can go from squares 3 to 13 with the probabilities shown above. So to build the matrix, all we need to do is start with a go square and then simply shift down by one. And here we have the roll matrix. I wish there was a better way to show this in Python. Alright, the next one that we're gonna do is actually the simplest one. 
we're gonna do the go to jail spot and the idea here is pretty simple if you land in the go to jail spot you're sent immediately to jail so what we're gonna do here is first build an identity matrix this will make sure that none of the columns but the go to jail column is affected then in the go to jail column instead of leaving the one where it's supposed to be which corresponds with the go to jail we're gonna replace that and set it to zero and send the go to jail spot immediately to jail so if you land in the go to jail spot you're taking Taken to jail that's it the next one we're gonna do is chance and here again we're gonna build an identity matrix for the three columns that we have a chance spot we're gonna set those to zero and then we're gonna change the probabilities so there are 10 cards that actually move you places so for those 10 cards we're gonna change the probabilities that if you land in the chance spot you can be taken to those places but there are also six cards that will not move you places so there is a six out of 16 chance that you will actually stay where you land it even though it's a chance square for the community square we do a very similar thing here there are only two cards that will take you places that they will take you to go or jail and there is a 14 out of 16 chance that you'll be left where you land it so here we do a very similar thing like above the next one is rolling three doubles and going to jail and this was actually quite interesting. So instead of the identity matrix, I built a matrix where instead of once you have 215 over 216, which is the probability of not getting three doubles in a row. So I said that instead of one because you can get three doubles in a row in each square. And then I set a probability of one over 216 that you can be sent to jail if you are in any square because you might roll three doubles. So that's it, pretty simple. One sanity check that I did for all these matrices as I was building them is to check if the sum of the columns is always one and it should always be one because the probability of moving from one square to all the other squares is one. So I multiplied all the matrices together and I got the final transition matrix. So there are two ways about solving this as well. I could have multiplied the matrix hundreds and thousands of times but that would have taken a lot of computational time so i just got the eigenvector out of this matrix and i used it to get the steady state probability as shown below so the steady state probability is this and i put it in an excel spreadsheet and there i used it to combine it based on the colors and see which colors are frequented the most and have a good return as well and out of this the colors that are visited the most and have the best return are the orange ones but close in second are the red ones and that makes a lot of sense because those are the squares that are after jail and jail is the most visited spot out of all of them so this is it for the video i hope you have learned something and i hope you enjoyed the video if you did feel free to leave us a like and subscribe it's free and leave us a comment of what you'd like to see in the next videos peace